everyone. Uh, this is uh, Team 15, who, uh, whose project title is Slavebot. It is uh, done by Ravi, uh, myself, Tarun, Varun, the team leader, and Rajesh. Our project title is Slavebot. So, what actually motivated us to do this project was, uh, firstly, you know, Kinect, which is a gaming console, which is an accessory to a gaming console Xbox. So, we were excited to take this, take up this project, which is involving Kinect. And secondly, what is more uh, better or luxurious than sitting and guiding the stuff and getting things done. So this is what which actually motivates us to do the project, which is, uh, and we call it as a slave bot. So our title is basically maneuvering the bot. Uh, and this maneuvering, we took it to an volume level, which is uh, pinpointing the location, specific location where we want the bot to travel. And uh, the next thing is like we have given, a, we could give a sequence of instructions to maneuver the bot and then execute them uh, one after other. As well as uh, after reaching all its destinations, we, the bot actually backtracks to its initial location. So this is a project description. Firstly, we'll be, we have been using Kinect, so which will uh, actually uh, read inputs in the form in terms of frames, which has uh, it has color frames, depth frame, uh, depth frames, which is as well as uh, skeletal frame. So with the help of these three frames, it will be able to perceive the environment three, uh, in a three D fashion, and. Uh, this and next is uh, we used uh, threads to actually increase the throughput of a project. We had to display videos and to process various calculations. It was uh, time taking, so we uh, made use of the threads to actually speed up the time, uh, better like improve the time complexity, as well as uh, next uh, next we improve uh, use the protocol the stop and wait protocol. So what this does is that uh, the bot tends to execute an instruction. Only once it's uh, only once it receives an acknowledgement. So b basically, uh, we give an instruction to the bot, and uh, the bot on, on uh, performing the instruction sends back an acknowledgement, and that is when the next instruction is sent to the bot. And uh, if an acknowledgement is not passed to the bot, it happens to wait for a minute or so, and then if there is no acknowledgement, then again it tends to execute the next instruction. Actually, I'll giving I'll be giving introducing you the gestures such as pinpointing locations. Uh, I'll be first pointing to my right, then to my left, and then to the back, and the bot will actually tend to move in, uh, related to itself in those directions. So this is going to be my first command, and I'm asking the bot to move right, and I'm now locking this location. Now to the left, I'm locking this location, and then to the back, and now I'm be uh, asking the bot to execute this command by actually contracting my right elbow. It moved right by 15 degrees. Now actually left by 12 degrees. And then it rotated back by 109 degrees. Now it is backtracking back to its initial position. So this is our first uh, pinpoint basic gesture. Now I will go to the basic gestures, such as uh, putting both my hands up is moving forward, and back is stopping. And this way it is right rotate, and this is left rotate. So these are all my gestures. The challenges which is uh, involved in a project is uh, firstly the design of algorithm itself. Now uh, this involved a uh, proper thread synchronization. We had to prevent the race conditions while uh, pre-synchronizing various threads which actually involved uh, actions such as passing the information to the bot and computing the, uh, co computing the values which was actually pinpointed by us. And uh, the next challenge was implementing a shop and wait protocol. Uh, uh, and the next one was uh, you know the constraints which we had on the values which we had to send through Zigbee. The um, uh, range of value which we could send through Zigbee was only 128 values. That is actually 7 bits So through ASCII code. So what we actually did was we actually encoded, we took it, we actually sent the ASCII character corresponding to the value which we actually want to send. And then again we read converted back to the value and we computed uh, uh, correspondingly. And uh, these are the challenges which actually took, uh, we had to face in our project. And sec next is the future scope of the project is uh, now, being uh, implemented in a thread environment, this project actually could be extended to any application. And uh, next is uh, object, uh, what do you call uh, obstacle avoidance is a good add-on to a project, and uh, for better scalable applications. And uh, thread threading, uh, the way we coded threading could actually be improvised, and error could be minimised. So these are the various uh, future work. 